Hey, y'all, this is Randall King, and this is Real Love, Real Music. Real Life, Real Music Radio, with your host, Kyle Hutton. How are you doing, man? Thank you for, you, you drove, you drove all the way from uh, Lubbock, Texas, I think with one pit stop, to come be with us tonight. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come sit down with us here. Well, man, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, dude, so me and the merch guy here, we drove, don't let them fool you, he didn't drive a damn bit. Uh, I drove everything from Lubbock all the way here, man. We stopped at McGregor for the night, and uh, we made it. We're glad. We are glad. Well, I don't know if you remember, you've, you've, you've played a lot of dates and burned a lot of miles since the last time you and I talked in Steamboat uh, Springs, Colorado, and we're going to do that again tonight. But before I start asking you a whole bunch of questions, would you just pick us a song you want to kick off with and play yeah, it for us? I would love to. You guys want to hear a brand new song? First off, thank you guys for being here tonight. It's going to be a fun one, right? So hit up cold beer. Drinking with them boys back around here Like it's senior year Life ain't his yet Dipping back to catching touchdowns Big stars in a small town Some of us roll down Some of us will stick around Forever Life spins like a haggard record Go from good to bad to better Now you can't get back Sitting in your glass Got living like it's now and never Laughing about in that time on spring break Sitting, sipping on a rusted tailgate Yeah, the night's gonna end So we're taking it in while we're all together Ain't gonna be around forever My view's best when that sun kisses her skin. Her the morning light hidden just right on her side of the bed. God gave me a best friend. She's an angel, she's a blessing. Best one he ever sent down. He's been around forever. Go from good to bad to better Now you can't get back Sitting in your glass Got a lover like it's now or never Or a title let her know I got her No matter what come hell or how water So y'all don't need to say The most of every day that we get together Wanna keep her around forever Wanna keep her around forever Daddy used to throw me in the sky like I was Superman It's funny looking back now cause that's who I thought he was back then I didn't know he'd grow old and wouldn't be around forever Life spins like a haggard record Goes from good to bad to better Now you can't get back The sand in your glass Got living like it's now or never Every lucky that we got love in our eyes So don't hesitate to take time Make a call when you can Take every little chance They won't be around forever. They won't be around forever. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. So you had to go there to losing your old man in the first song. <laughs> hey, God, we get the man. tears out first, and then we go and drink and have a good time, right? Oh, goodness. Okay, so, you know, one of the things, Randall, that, that I appreciate, and, and I grew up uh, in a town where you knew everybody's business, you knew their social mm -hmm. security number. I mean, we were tight. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's too it, tight. It was a small town. <laughs> and one of the things I love uh, about your country music is I feel like there's a lot of stuff out there right now that is forced. I can see that. I can see what you're saying now. And, and uh, I, I'll stop shy of saying contrived. Uh, and, and one of the things that I love uh, is how pictures of where you come from and things you've experienced and just who you are show up in your music. And, and, and I wanted to ask you, because I know you're, you're from a small town. You, Her Herford, Texas, is that? Yes, sir. Right? Herford, okay. Texas. So you know where Herford in, is? Up, up in the Panhandle. Yeah. So uh, here you are with, on this stage with us tonight, right? And, and I know... You've got family still there. I'm sure you've got friends still there. And you referenced in that song uh, being getting out, getting out of the yeah. town. You know what you I know, mean? So, I mean, that's, it's kind of the same thing for any small town, you know. There's going to be some that get out and go. There's going to be some that stay there forever, man. But uh, for me, within my songwriting, I've always taken it as uh, if I don't believe it. Now, I don't necessarily believe that you got to live out every damn song. But we're not Hank Williams, not all of us. <laughs> But I do believe that I have to believe in the song and uh, to be able to sell it to you guys. If I don't believe it, you guys never will. So if I don't love the song, believe in it, I'm not going to write it. There you go. Yeah. So when you were there in that town, could you have pictured what you're getting to do tonight? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, dude, I was like three years old looking in the mirror pretending to be George Strait. You know, <laughs> didn't I? Come on. This is, what I, this is what I've always wanted to do, and I'm just, uh, I'm blessed that the work that I've put in has led me to where I'm at. And so, But uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at without these people coming in here and paying a ticket tonight. So thank you, guys. Yeah. So then let's just jump right to it. Uh, it you know. I would say one of the countryest songs that I've heard in the last, I don't know, however many years, a bunch, is a song you put out that did really well for you called Mirror, Mirror. I wonder if you tell <laughs> us about that song. Tell us about it and play You guys are us. trying to go home early, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> We're jumping all the way to the big one. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, man, Mirror, Mirror. God, I love that song. So, uh... I come from a little bar in Lubbock, Texas called the Blue Light Live, if any of y'all know. Yeah, she knows. I think you might be the only one, but you know, that's good. <laughs> uh, I come from uh, the Blue Light Live in Lubbock where a lot of, uh, a lot of other guys started out, man. And Lubbock's been rich uh, with just artist history, man, going back from Mac Davis yep. to Joey Lee to Pat Green, Wade Bowen. Oh, you can go Waylon Jennings. Yep. I mean, there's, dang, there's a lot of people who came out of Lubbock. Yep. But this bar specifically, man, it's been home to a lot of us. Guys like Wade Bowen, Josh Abbott, Will Green, uh, Cleto Cordero from Flatland Cavalry, myself. I mean, countless others. Red Shahan, if you know Red. I mean, there's just so many great ones. And uh, I'm proud to be along that line. But Josh and Will put together this thing called the 806 Campfire. So anybody that had ever started out in Lubbock, not just necessarily Blue Lubbock, but anybody ever started out in Lubbock, we... Uh, they invite them out to Larry Joe Taylor's ranch one week out of the year. We sit down and we just write country music for one week out of the time. And it usually just turns into a drunk campfire sing-along, but we got some good songs out of it, you know. And uh, the first year we did it, my buddy Brandon brought this song to me. And he, uh, he's like, dude, I got one that I've been holding in the back pocket. I've tried to write it with some other people. It didn't work out. and they didn't want to ride it, and uh, he's like, it's real country, and I think that you're the guy to ride it with, and I was like, all right, dude, well, uh, I'm down, so we went out to my tailgate on the pickup, and uh, we started writing this song. We got a verse and a chorus when 
my buddy Dalton Domino, who's also the 806, if you guys know Dalton Domino. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you guys know, you guys know Dalton Domino, huh? <laughs> mm. Yeah. I swear to God, dude. He walked up, and he threw, like, two lines, three lines in. He might have written a full verse, but I only kept one line. <laughs> But, you know, in Nashville, you, you get in the router room, they lock the door, nobody can come in. Uh, when you're sitting on the tailgate at your pickup in Texas, anybody can walk in and throw a damn line. So as soon as they do that, they get a portion of the song. So Dalton gets a third of the song for one line. <laughs> one line. <laughs> but, yeah, Dalton, but uh, Brandon hey, pitched when, that song to me, man. He, uh, when, when Dalton did the show here... Great. He said you wrote one. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I'm sure he did. He <laughs> tells everybody he wrote the whole thing, and then I just cut it. He throws Brendan's name in there once in a while. But, yeah. yeah, he's a turd. But, <laughs> but Brandon, yeah, Brandon, uh, he pitched me that song, man, and I, the first words out of his mouth was, Mirror, mirror on the wall. I was like, yep, we're going to write that, Bubba. <laughs> and we did. And it was uh, my second number one. Y'all want to hear it? If I play this song right out the gate, I expect you guys are going to sing along, right? All right? We'll see. We'll test that theory.
Thank you, about, thank you all for making that number one, man. I appreciate y'all very much. By the way, I didn't hear you singing along. I don't like it. <laughs> no, I heard you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm just being a smart ass. <laughs> we expect nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. So uh, today is a, a, a pretty, pretty big day because you dropped a brand new video today for a yeah, song called did. Hey Cowgirl. We did, man. It's a... Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's one we've been holding on, holding in our back pocket, waiting on. It's the last single of, uh, of a three-song series that we did of uh, basically the stages of a heartbreak. It's the final one. It's the acceptance. Most people don't accept it. You're supposed to accept it. That's the song. <laughs> I just like how you're taking life lessons that you've learned from heartbreak and lining them out for us in a series. I appreciate that. Hey, uh, yeah. You're welcome, I guess, for living it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think really, you know, since I get to sit here and ask the questions, I think everybody really wants to know. So uh, are you on the receiving end or the giving end of those heartbreaks? That's probably the better that, question. That is the weirdest <laughs> way I've ever heard that put. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a pitcher, not a catcher, right? <laughs> no. I've definitely had my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got I'm that. not going to touch that. That's an FCC violation. I would If I ever heard of it. Okay, so hey, cowgirl. First off, tell us about the. How many of you watched the video today? Did some of you watch? Yeah, okay, so we got fans watching. It was just released today. Tell us about the making of that video and then a little bit about the song and play it for us. I would love to, man. Uh, like I said, you know, that's the, that's the final stage of the, of the heartbreak. You had the first stage, which was She Gone. Second stage was. Uh, Burner to both ends, which is the total meltdown. And uh, the third stage would be acceptance, which is where you just see her on the highway. You know that you're both going on to do better things, and probably she's going to go do better things than you are, but you tip your hat anyway, and you move it on, man. And this song is uh, this song is about that, man. I wrote this with a, a guy named Bryce Long and a guy named Mark Nessler. And if, uh, if you all know Mark, he wrote, a, he wrote a little song called Just to See You Smile. Hey cowgirl With your head down low Ravens on Pretty hair blowing in the wind Oh where you been Where are you going You got your radio on And you've lived every word Of that George Strait song That's playing You know the one Every lullaby morning
So I, I kind of started, it's kind of like, you know, the Star Wars series started not at the beginning. So that's what I did <laughs> on that. I started not at I the beginning. You. So now let's go backwards. Uh, <laughs> let, let's go backwards through those while we're on that conversation. Um, she Gone. Now that's a title for a country song if I've ever heard one. She Gone. <laughs> she Gone. She Gone. Tell us about that one. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but... I mean, uh, like I said, it's not necessarily that we've lived all our songs, but uh, definitely seen a woman a time or two with her window down and her finger up, you know? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. He knows what I'm talking about. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so she gone, man. I just started with that. Literally started with that line. I just had it in my head. She gone. Had the uh, had the energy, the idea, and I took it to a, uh, I took it to a guy named Chris Stevens, and uh, we sat there, and uh, he built a track to it, and we got a demo done, wrote the song, took it to uh, took it to my my team, and they were like, yeah, we gonna cut that. So I, that's the gist of it, man. There's there's nothing that's, more to that's, it. That's than, it, and it's another one with a cool cool video. Oh, yeah, man. I'm a I'm a big I'm a big Dirk Bentley fan. Uh, and I wore his records out in high school, going down, uh, going down in my truck, running down the highway. And uh, I guarantee you that I, f I feel like there's a big piece of Dirks in this song for mm -hmm. sure. I can hear it. Are y'all doing okay out there? Is everybody good? Y'all having fun so far? Okay, just checking. To the sound and gravel flying pedal down. When I came to, I jumped up, fell out of bed, and hit the ground. Ran out the screen door, choking on her dust. She had her window down, and her finger up. Yeah, she gone. She sang that. Gone. No turning back, no second chance. Was done is done. That's all she wrote. If I was been wrong, she never said so. How the hell was that? I don't know. If she didn't gave me a shot, I swear then I would have cleaned up. Probably not. Through stuff, talk about rough. Should have seen that bright red goodbye lipstick crying that was on the wall. Could have seen myself blindside hell if I'd have never fell at all. And it's almost like she had the whole thing planned out all along. Yes, she came, she loves to kick off in the rest.
Yes, she claims she loves she to golf in a rush. She had my dog in the back of her truck. She gone. Thank you. I got to catch my breath after that one. That's a fast one. Oh, man. Do you even try to st sing that song in Steamboat? I think. I Talk about lose, your, you lose your breath, man. It's hard oh, to yeah, sing no. up there. Yeah, we put that outdoor stage, and uh, right before us was Reed Southall, and he walked up. He was like, <sighs> take deep breaths, man. <laughs> All right. He, was, he wasn't wrong. He was not you wrong. You got to take deep breaths in between words, especially on a song like that. So, <laughs> I, so just watching you play guitar on that last one, and, and obviously, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to see your full band in places like Steamboat where you're playing to thousands of people. It's snowing. Everybody's rocking. You're having a good time. You, do you prefer, or, or is it just kind of as an artist you appreciate each opportunity do you prefer the high octane full band or do you like sitting down and doing this kind of presentation? Like, do you lean one way or the other? Man, I like it all, man. Uh, I'm a music fan. I'm a fan of uh, putting, putting passion and energy into my songs and seeing, seeing how people react, man. And people react differently with different settings. And I don't define myself with one pinpointed thing. It's, uh, it's kind of a hard thing for me to do. So... You see his full band, you'll, you'll see both the high energy and then sometimes we'll dial it back and we'll play things like uh, When He Knows Me, you know, which is a tough song to play. Uh, it just kind of takes the air out of, out of, out of your yeah. full high energy stuff, you know. So I mean, we, we play it by ear. We play it off the crowd. We play it off how you guys feel. And uh, once in a while, we'll create the mood, create the setting. But for the most part, man, we go out there and we go, we go all out. Well, it's fun. It, it, it's fun getting to hear you in this setting. And that's one of the things I love about this show, whether it's with, you know, some of the songwriters from Nashville that have come down and done the show, or if it's, you know, somebody like a Randy Rogers that's been doing it for a long time, yeah. or, or, you know, we, we just uh, love being able to kind of peel it back, yeah. hear what's going on. It's kind of like an acoustic demo, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you really, if you can sell it now, you can sell it. Yeah. That's kind of what I've said, man. You know, there's a lot of people that are, that'll bring a guitar picker with them or a fiddle player, steel player. But my thought was always, if I can't do it with just me and my acoustic, I'm not a real artist. So, thank you. Okay, now that y'all are all warmed up, okay? Because Randall's warmed up. <laughs> it took up. she gone to get y'all warmed but up. But now that y'all are warmed up. I, I need y'all to help me out here because we start the radio program uh, and, and our podcast with a liner from our guest artist, okay? So Randall's going to say, this is Randall King, and this is Real Life Real Music. And then I need you guys to just go absolutely nuts, okay? For about four minutes, and then I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. It'll be quick, okay? But uh, So he's going to say the liner. This is Randall King, and this is Real Life Real Music. And then you guys go nuts until I cut you off, all right? Y'all with me? Everybody ready? All right. All right. Hey, y'all, this is Randall King, and this is Real Life Real Music. <laughs> now, where was that for Mirror Mirror? <laughs> All right, while we're on it, and then we're going to shift gears, all right, play us the third song in the trilogy of Heartbreak, okay? And that's... Uh, I did. You didn't play Burning at Both Ends yet. That's the second. You? You're talking about the... What, what number Which we one? On? I don't know which number. No, you've I missed one. Have I you did. done all three of them? You're talking about the second one, the middle one. Yes, the Who middle one. Who taught you how to count? <laughs> I am an Aggie. <laughs> I've got the ring to prove it. <laughs> Whoop. I'm not going to say nothing. I like that. Don't say anything. <laughs> uh, so you're looking for number two? Yes, number two. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the that's, the, that's burning at both ends, man. That's the meltdown stage. That's the damn you for leaving. I'm going to burn your memory out completely then if you ain't coming back. <laughs> I actually wrote this with a guy named Brett Beavers, who is the, uh, he was the producer for Dirk's first three records, which had a really big influence on me. I love those records. Thank you, guys. Very nice. Thank you. All right. So now I want to ask you about uh, one of my favorite songs on the full-length project, your last full-length studio project, the self-entitled Randall King. Man, the first track on that record, Freightline. That's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite Randall King songs. <laughs> I wrote, that, I wrote that for my dad, man. I grew up, I grew up in this old 80s model freight liner. And, uh, man, the only reason I even know what country music is is because my dad was a huge, huge country music fan. He listened to, you know, he listened to some, some old school rock, but uh, for the most part, man, he was Hank Williams, Electric Brazil, Merle Haggard, Gene Watson. I mean, dude, the legends. And uh, he had this serious satellite radio I understand, my dad worked his tail end off, and I never got to see him much. I probably saw him two days a week because he was always working. He was just a working man. and uh, So if I wanted to see him, I'd go on the road with him. And when I'd go on the road, he had this XM satellite radio, 
And he would cover the face of it every time a new song came on. And he'd go, name the song, name the artist. And usually within like the signature lick, I could get it at the back. And uh, that's how I learned about country music, man. I fell in love with it. And uh, I mean, some of the, those are some of the greatest memories I've ever had. I was riding down the road with my dad in that 80s model Freightliner. And I was going through Fort Worth on my way to Denton. And I hit I-35 traffic. And there was this damn Freightliner just sitting right in my way. And I literally went, come on, Freightline, get your ass in gear. And I meant that shit. I was like, go! <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote the song. That's where it came from. But I tell people I wrote this for my dad, and I, I really did. By the time I, by the time I got done with those, like, this is, this is my daddy's song. So, awesome. oh, you want me to play it? All right. <laughs> Come on. Get your ass in gear. No, we got a full breeze. Have a work around here. Want them no problem if you listen here. So come on, Freightline. Get your ass in gear. Come on, Freightline. You gotta find them a will. Hang on a stop. Hang a word about me. We'll get some diesel, get some men in wrong pills. Come on, Fred Line, gotta burn them well. Says I ain't woman, waiting patiently. In her sweet arms is where I really wanna be. So get on it, Fred Line. You know we need more space. Gotta be in dosing dough. Deadline is three. How much for five oh if you just pay? You don't need freight line. We need more space. Trucking hard is yes, a trucking can. So come on, Fred Line, don't you understand? There's a woman waiting patiently in her sweet arms is where I Thank you. Yeah. Thank y'all for loving that song as much as I do, man. <laughs> Are y'all having fun out there yet? <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this, because when you and I talked, uh, when, when you and I talked upstairs, y you mentioned, you know, playing us some stuff that's, that's, that's new, you know, some stuff yeah. that's kind of hot off the press. Tell us, I mean, whatever you can. I don't know how much, you know, how much you get bridled by management and <laughs> record labels and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, uh, Warner Nashville, um, so you've, you've, you've signed a deal. Uh, and, and the records that we've heard so far have been, you know, independent releases with you producing yeah. or your, your buddies on them, buddies playing. Tell us, I mean, what's the next chapter for you? What can we expect to see as fans over the next... 12 months. Uh, 
one would hope for the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. Uh, man, honestly, you know, we signed, I signed a deal with the Warner back in August. And, uh, you know, every, I think everybody worries about that kind of stuff. A lot of people, especially coming from an independent aspect. But for me, uh, nobody's going to tell me who I am or who I need to be. So that's part, of, that's, part of the, that's part of the deal, man. I get to be me. And I'm blessed that Warner's allowing that. And uh, we got some. We got three new songs that we just dropped out. We got three more that's coming, man. And the biggest thing with Warner is they get, I get a mass market with with Warner. You know, it's like signing when you sign a deal, you get basically a big, uh, big promotion company, man. It's pretty much what it is. Yeah. So we got three new songs coming this spring, and then hopefully a big full length record at the back end of 2020. Hopefully, don't quote me on it. Don't quote me on it. But I know for sure we got three more coming out this spring. And uh, we've already cut them. These last three I uh, did with uh, Bart Butler and Ryan Gore, which they are uh, John Party's producer and uh, the engineer, man. So he did these. they did these three tracks. They're doing the next three tracks, and uh, we're looking at them to do the full-length record. We'll put these six with another hopefully seven or eight. And uh, I've got about 35 songs I've written that I've got to trim down to seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's going to be good, man. I'll probably play you some that... Uh, they won't end up on the record if you guys want. I'll play, I'll play stuff that's going to be on the record. I don't care. We're here to have a good time, right? Yeah. And I get to do what I want. So, hey. <laughs> well, you want to play us one of the three? Yeah, man. I'll play. Uh, well, I already did. I started with one, Around Forever, man. Yeah. That was, uh, a that was great one of song. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much. <laughs> No, you want me to. There's a difference. That's great. I got a good friend of mine that uh, also started out at the Blue Light. He's a uh, really tall redhead singer-songwriter by the name of Danny Sadra. And if you've seen the Chick-fil-A commercials where uh, the cashier held on to his money and at the end of the commercial they play trumpet together on a big red couch... That is my buddy Danny Sadra. But, you know, Danny was going through some things with, uh, with his ex-wife in, uh, in regards to his little girl. And uh, I don't think there was, I don't think there's anybody out there, that's probably my own father that I've ever met that loves his little girl more than Danny, man. And uh, he's just one of the greatest fathers I've ever met. And all he wants to do is see his little girl. And uh, he went through, he went through, through some things with his ex-wife where he wasn't allowed to see his little girl for about 60 days due to some court things. and I'm here to tell you, man, whether it's a man doing it to a woman, a woman doing it to a man, it doesn't make a difference. You don't keep your kid from each other because it don't hurt nobody but the kid. But during that time, man, I sat down and I wrote this song for my buddy Danny because I've never seen... I've never seen heartbreak like that. This is called Hey Moon. This is for Danny's little girl. Hey Moon, it's me again. That kind, it's always shaking back in. How's she doing? I'm hoping better, better than I've been. Hey, moon, there's someone you see that stands between her love and me. Yeah, I miss her. Tell me I miss her. Hey, moon, I'm giving it all that I got. Hey, moon. And I know that it's crazy Talking to a rock in the sky But I gotta try Hey, moon Is she looking up from her room? Thinking of us Has she been tucked in? Wondering where I've been Dreaming about seeing me
But I gotta try Hey, amen Thank you, guys. Thank you. That's for you, Denny. <laughs> Man. That's, that one's rough right there. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Well, good. That you means it, uh, it speaks to you, man. It speaks yeah. to the heart. I, I imagine, you know, that's one of those ones I imagine when you guys walked out of that appointment. Oh, you yeah. just went, you just went, yep. I also wrote yeah. that with Mark Nessler, who wrote Just to See You Smile, man. And uh, when we got, definitely when we got done, Oh, man, that we were like, it's a good day. It's a good day. It's a great song. Well, what uh, I've been leading you all over the place. Why don't you pick one that you want to play? Tell us about it. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. I had a song that didn't make the, ver the last record, the self-titled record. And uh, it made me sad, man. Because I love this song, and I wrote it about, bless you. I wrote it about, uh, I guess, three years ago. Uh, I always wanted to write a song with uh, a couple of my friends, Jason Eady and Courtney Patton. So I drove out to Stephenville, Texas, and uh, yeah, man. Y'all know Jason Eady and Courtney? Yeah. yeah. Incredible people, man. A, a true power couple. They're, they're incredible. But uh, went out to their house in Stephenville and uh, sat down for a, for a night and an evening and uh, we wrote two songs, and uh, I love both of them, man, but this one right here, it didn't make the last record, but I'm fighting for it on this one. It's going to make this record, I promise you. No, I ain't the first man when you're running down your list every time. If you just make up your mind you got me on the hook But you're still out there casting lines you even got to know That I'll get loose in time Cause I'm just the one you wish for When your wishes don't work out And I ain't the one you think of When your head's up all some darks in all directions Just seeing where they land Well, if I ain't the one you dream about Well, I damn sure ain't your fallback man When you finish with your third drink Putting where he is When you start thinking about me It's time I won't be No fallback man Cause I'm just the one you wish for When your wishes don't work out And I ain't the one you think of When your head's up in the clouds You don't see darks in all directions Just seeing where they land Well if I ain't the one Sure, 
ain't you damn sure ain't you falling back, man. Thank you. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you think you should make the record? Yeah. Nah. I figured you would. I think, I think so. Hey, are you going to hang around and uh, sign some autographs and oh, absolutely, man. That kind of stuff after yeah, we got a merch table down, over there. Right over there, the merch table, man. I'll shake you all, shake all your hands and uh, sign whatever you want and uh, your babies, all of it, man. Well, whatever. I've seen some weird requests before, so. Uh, I'm not afraid, <laughs> but uh, I'll be right over there, man. We'll sign whatever and uh, shake your hand, take a picture. Thank y'all for being here tonight, man. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, and we're not we're not quitting yet. Don't worry, we're not we're not quitting yet. I just uh, wanted want, wanted to make sure you came over there to see us. You know, water tastes better in these real life real music coffee mugs, and we've got those for sale right over there at the merch table. So mine's stop got actual coffee in it. Does it? Yeah. I don't know who hooked that up, but How's it taste? It. Pretty good, probably. It tastes like coffee. It's good. <laughs> it's better, it tastes better in the cup. Yes, you see what I did? Thank you very much. You owe me for that. I appreciate that. that. I That's appreciate 10 cents. That. You got it. I'll give you a penny for every mug we sell tonight. <laughs> All right. So uh, I want to go back to the first EP uh, that's available. Now, I do want to ask you, were there recordings before Another Bullet? And can we find them secretly somewhere if there are? We don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> I got it. All right, enough said. <laughs> They're terrible. You don't want them. They're awful. We buried it. I had a whole record. I'll, I'll say it. I had a whole record that, uh, that we made back in the day, but it was under Randall King Band. It was entirely different. It was not me. Henceforth, I buried it. I wrote the song, but it wasn't for me, so I, I buried that thing. You can't find it, I promise you, but good luck. You can I've try. I've got four copies at the merch table. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's <laughs> just out there peddling them in his, in, out of his trunk and just burn copies. <laughs> try, man, yeah. Undiscovered. Yeah. They're not so, worth anything. Don't buy it. So I want to ask you about the uh, title cut to the first EP you put out, uh, Another Bullet. Because, you know, you, you still play some stuff uh, off of this every night when you're out playing. But tell us about Another Bullet. I wonder if you'd play that one for us. That song is the reason that I have anything that I have today, man. Uh, I, did a, I did a radio tour, God, I guess uh, five years ago now, five years ago, six years ago when we were back when we were Randall King Band and we were doing... Uh, whatever the hell that was. And uh, <clears throat> they just sent me across Texas to do radio tour. And I was traveling around in my old 95 GMC and uh, sleeping in it, going town to town, hitting up radio stations, asking, pretty much begging them to play my stuff, man. And uh, I loved it. It was a great time of my life. And it was about six months long. And I put a lot of miles on my pickup. I had to sell the pickup pretty much afterwards. Like it was, it was toast, but... During that six month span, man, my uh, my uncle hit me up, and uh, I come from a long line of smart asses. <laughs> it rubs off, as you can tell, <clears throat> and uh, my uncle's definitely one of them. And he texts me and he goes, "Randall, I think I can write a better song than you." All right, I'm game. He goes, uh, "We're gonna take, we're gonna we're gonna find an article, we're gonna write." I'm going to write a song about it. You're going to write a song about it. We'll compare at the end, but I'm going I'm to get you. I said, All right, I'll take you up on that. So he sent me this link to a, uh, an article that a WT student out there in West Texas A&M, they had written it based on a guy named Tom Blassingame. The song was pretty much the last known true living cattle drive cowboy, like the real deal. I'm talking John Wayne, no fences out there. Living it like a real, like a real cattle drive cowboy, man. And uh, he was the last of his kind. And he watched all of modern civilization become what it is. I mean, he died in like the 1980s. And he was born in the early 1900s. So he watched that entire change. And uh, he despised it and hated it. So he lived on the Goodnight Ranch up in Amarillo, Texas. Until the day he died, 
He lived the cowboy way of life. He, his wife lived in town, and he lived in an old shack on that ranch five days a week with no electricity. I don't even know if he had to run water. I mean, he lived the real cowboy way of life. That's somebody that truly believed in what he loved and stood up for it to the day he died. And I take that shit to heart. But I sat down and I wrote this song about Tom. And uh, I'm pretty sure I kicked my uncle's ass on this one, so. This is another bullet. Break on the horses You can't have no spirit here but Shutting down a way of life That stood a lot of years Progress is gonna get us If the smoke and the whiskey don't You'd think the day and leave us well enough alone. So set the free range up in smoke. Might as well just let it go. You can't work and you can't ride. Cause there ain't no fields left to run. All them fences done gone up. There ain't no cattle drive. Another bullet in the cowboy line It's getting harder to find tough There ain't a scuff on no boots It seems these days that a man ain't got a thing to prove Boys I grew up on back and breaking Hard labor and callous hands And if you've got a problem you Step out back, take a chance So set the free range up in the smoke Might as well just let it go Fences done gone up, there ain't no cattle drive. Another boy in the cowboy life. Yeah. Yeah, so set the free range up in smoke. Might as well. The boy in the cowboy line Yet another bullet in the cowboy line song kick-started my career, man. I wouldn't have a thing without that song. So thank y'all for believing in it as much as I did, man. Thank you. Man, I, 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 I love how your music and then even in your stories and everything, you, you, you pay respect to stuff that 
you believe in. You, you pay respect Absolutely. to stuff that's come before you. I, I'm one of those guys that reads the liner notes, right? <laughs> and so it, it, it means a lot to me, you know, it, it, your, your first line inside your Randall King self-entitled deal, I mean, you're, you're thinking somebody a lot bigger than, your, than yourself in that line. You thank God and your, your Savior. How does, how, do, how does faith play into how you see life, how you picture life, how you write songs? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Man, I grew up, I mean, I grew up in a Christian home, and uh, I grew up going to private school, actually, man, and I was, a, uh, I was the leader of my high school worship team. And that is, uh, that's how, that was the first time I ever played with a band. So uh, I think to me, man, I think, I think God speaks through a lot of different things, but I truly believe he speaks through music, just the way music speaks to other people, man. So, I, I mean, I think that God, God uses that through me, and he's put me in the positions that he's put me. And, uh, you know, all, all things go to his good graces, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Is it? Is there is there like a is there an old gospel standard or something? Oh, Hank, you know, I, do do you have anything like that in your set that you that you do? Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to that home on God's celestial shore, buddy. I fly away. sang at my grandfather's funeral. My grandpa meant the world to me and he died from a horrible, horrible disease called Alzheimer's. And I wrote this song for him. He talked about burning it up in a loading down truck hauling 30 tons back in the day. All those years on the road gear shifted down low. 18 mils fast, slow, rolling away. Everything he's done, everyone he loved. Well, seven days he remembers, some days he just don't. Some days you come knocking, nobody's home, and you gotta just leave him alone. Well, the night comes on every once in a while Like he was never gone Gives me a smile We pick up right where we left off Those precious moments are getting Fewer and further between When he knows me I've been a foe and a friend And an old field hand It's a man that he met Somewhere that nobody knows All he has is the past And he keeps sleeping back Happy or sad, good and bad It's heavy and low Everything he's done Everyone he loves Leave him alone But the light comes on Every once in a while We keep us never gone Gives me a smile We pick up Right where we left on 
those precious moments and gave fewer and further between. Thank you. You know, my grandfather never saw a single show of mine. I played music for about six years. He didn't see a single show because of his disease. But I promise you, for the last two years, he's been at every single one, man. That's why I don't play that song full band, man. It just <laughs> <laughs> takes it down. <laughs> That's a great song. Thank you. Man. That's a great Thank song. You. you know, as I'm sitting here, and, and this is the cool thing about, you know, doing this show is I get to sit here and I get to, I get to talk to guys like you from pr perspective of not only as a music fan, but as a, as a musician. And as I'm sitting here and you guys can tell me, you know, what, what you think too, but you know, I grew up listening to the, the music I was listening to and really digging into was guys like, you know, Steve Warner. Oh, yeah. And Don, Don Williams. Mm -hmm. And uh, gosh, I mean, the, the stuff that I just had on, on repeat was country music like that. And, and there was always a distinctive voice, right? Always a oh, distinctive yeah. voice. Uh, they were always good songs, but they weren't always written by the guy that was singing them. I love George Strait. He's written about two of the songs that he's <laughs> that that he's cut. But I love George. Uh, like I'm not taking anything from that. Um, I love a great guitar player, right? I mean, there's just something as a musician. There's something really cool about watching somebody that can get the emotion of what they're feeling out of a piece of wood with some strings on it, right? Um, man, you have all the best of everything I've liked as a fan. Damn. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. The songs, the ability to, to, to give them to us, and, and the voice, and uh, man, this better not be the last time you come do this show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it ain't, man. I don't see why I would. <laughs> Well, we had Cody come about three times, <laughs> and now the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo won't let him come back. But that's a good problem to have. That's a pretty, it's a pretty solid problem. Pr that's a 75,000 people problem. That is. That is. <laughs> Tugging on my heartstrings. All right. <clears throat> what you don't know? I want to know. I, I, I just want you to tell us a story, man. So, uh, speaking of George Strait, you guys know that song that's like a... Baby, run, cut a path across blue skies. Is that ringing a bell? Yeah. So, my songwriting hero, Tony Lane, and a really good friend of mine by the name of Anthony Smith wrote that song. And, uh, I had the privilege of writing with Anthony, and we wrote When He Knows Me for the first time. That was our first song together, which is like 
a pretty brutal song for your first song together, man. I mean, that's like, uh, it's like kissing a girl on the first date without saying hello, man. Like, good <laughs> Lord. I'm just going right in on it. <laughs> Some of y'all have done that, huh? Yeah. But I wrote, I wrote this next song with Anthony, man, and uh, we, we went out to his house, and uh, I had this, I had this, uh, we had this different song we were working on, and we were taking it every angle we could possibly take it, and we were writing it, rewriting it, and it was all right, it was okay, and uh, Anthony kind of picked up on it that it was all right, it was okay. So we went out to, we went out to lunch after that, and we took a break, and we were sitting there. I was like, dude, I think we need to scratch that last one. I got one. I got one of the things that's going to be good for us. And we sat in there, and I had a little line called, Just tugging on my heart <laughs> Henceforth, we wrote the song. Boxes, but like hands scattered on around my bachelor pad. But on my boots, holes in my blue jeans. Ain't never been the kind to keep my truck clean. Been blowing my money on Wednesday night. Tugging on my heart train Don't I change She don't care I'm getting up early And I'm combing my hair I try to fight But she don't fight fair Ain't I like it Man, I swear She's tugging on my heart train I like to watch ESPN of a lifetime moves never end. She even turned out all my redneck friends. In my man cave, she done caved in. But she's always right, and I'm always wrong. Memorize that voice. Should be. Tugging on my heart strings I'm not changed She don't care I'm getting up burning and I'm coming to her I try to fight But she don't fight fair Ain't I like it Man, I swear She's tugging on my heart strings I'll tug on Combing my hair, trying to fight, but you don't fight fair. I hate I like it, man. I swear, she's tugging on my heart strings. Oh, she's tugging on them heart strings. Well, oh, she's tugging on my heart strings. my first number one, man. Thank y'all for making that number one. Can I play one for you? Dude, absolutely. You tell me what key and I'll play it with you. Please do. Uh, I'll tell you in just a minute after I get tuned up here. I'll tell you the story uh, about this one while I'm tuning up. Uh, I dropped my I dropped my middle son off uh, I dropped him off to at his buddy's house one morning just over off of uh, 242 and 1488. I'm, I'm from this area. I live over in Magnolia. And, uh, oh, yeah, Magnolia in the house. Uh, 
Hold on one second. I was in a really, really but funky you t- you tune. You tune and talk real well. I'm, Man, I'm, I, I'm enjoying I actually this. don't. I'm lost. I could save you, but I'm just watching. I, you're such a good friend. <laughs> I can always count on you, Randall. Uh, Anytime, man. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. <laughs> you're very welcome. Uh, I, dropped my, I dropped my middle son off at his friend's house. Uh, he was a year older than my son. And when he graduated from high school, he decided he wanted to... Uh, enlist in the Marine Corps, and he invited my son to come to the swearing-in, and so I, I took, uh, took him over, and I went inside the house and gave the mom a hug and uh, shook the dad's hand, and then, uh, I'm still off somewhere, hold on, there it is. Gave the mom a hug, and as I left, I was backing out of the driveway, and I saw that young man's white pickup truck sitting there, and I wondered, number one, how many trucks are sitting in driveways across the, across the country? And then number two, I, I just thought to myself that those parents would never look at any symbol of freedom the same again when they would see it they just have a different different feel and uh i was walking out of that walking out of that uh house and pulling out of that driveway and uh started writing the chorus to this song and then i took it to a friend of mine drew walmack uh who's a great songwriter and and uh he and I finished this uh, this thing up, and I haven't found the right place for it yet. I haven't put it on a record yet. I haven't been in the studio since we wrote it. Uh, but at some point, this will uh, this will find its way out there. So if there's anybody here tonight that uh, has anybody they love that's that's in harm's way or could be in harm's way, uh, this. Uh, the song goes out to you. There's a truck in the driveway leaking oil waiting for a young man on foreign soil Dad on the front porch with his face to the breeze and mom in the kitchen down on her knees again and sometimes his best friend stops by just to say hi runs his hand down the side of that truck as he passes by and through the window as they're talking on the couch inside he sees that worn out windshield sticker Semper Fi and in the blink of a night Things get real, real fast And nothing looks the same as things looked in the past And the flag down at the schoolhouse, it still flies the same But freedom is different with skin Life is easy when it's fireworks and apple pie And learn what it all means as the parade goes by But there are some things you can't fully understand 
Till the taking of an oath and the raising of a hand Then in the blink of an eye Things get real, real fast Nothing looks the same as things looked in the past And the anthem down at the ball game It just don't sound the same Cause freedom is different With skin in the game And you don't know the cost Till there's a part of you That could get lost and In the blink of a night Things get real, real fast And nothing looks the same As things looked in the past Now that granite wall is more than just some list of names Cause freedom is different With skin in the game Yeah, freedom is different With skin Thank you very much. You said nobody recorded that? Not yet. Game on, man. <laughs> That's a good song, man. Good Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you. You just, you, so you just sat over the whole time talking to me and holding that in your back pocket? You know what, you man? Uh, I love writing songs. That's, that's why I love this show. That's why I love getting to do this. Uh, we, we've got shows coming up. Uh, Bruce, Bruce Robinson and his wife Kelly Willis are going to be Absolutely. here. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the amazing songs and stuff they've done. I've had the opportunity to sit up here with guys that I listen to in my daddy's truck, like Michael Martin Murphy and Larry Gatlin and Billy oh, Joe Shaver. And you know what I mean? The so legends, man. This the is legends. like... Uh, I've got the best job in the world, man. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys for being here, for supporting it. My friends at Chicago Title, we can't, not every night is this full. I'll bring home, I'll bring, bring, bring in, I'll bring home, like they're cats or dogs. I'll bring in, some of them are <laughs> dogs. You don't want to bring them home. Yeah, you don't. But I'll bring in, I'll bring in writers from Nashville that, you know, they've written songs, you know, a laundry list of songs you guys know, and we get to sit here and have these heartfelt conversations about it, and there's eight people out here. So my corporate sponsors totally make those nights still work for us, which is a great thing. Hey, man, you know, I'll say I've played, I've played in front of 10,000, 12,000 people before. Man, I will take a crowd of, what, 120, 150 people. I don't know, more than that. It's like two, 250 or something I like got in here. I'll take, it don't matter. I will take all of you guys sitting here locking in, paying attention to it, over that any day. Thank you. Well, here's the deal. We've got time for a couple more, Randall, and I've kind of been leading you all over the place. Yeah, uh, I, there's there's so like many a, songs. I'm like a good dog. You just take take me anywhere, man. I got you. Well, there's so many songs I want to ask you about, but I, I would really rather. I would really rather you pick a couple, whether they're new or you want to, you know, yeah. a new one, a standard, whatever you want to do. we got time for a couple more. And then, guys, we're going to have Randall over here at the merch table. Uh, it, it helps us all run up and down the road uh, if you pick up. You know, when you listen to our song on Spotify, uh, it, it would take you listen, listening to the song 6,000 times to be the equivalent of buying one of these hats tonight. 
And so uh, as far as revenue to the artist. So if you want to go pick up a T-shirt, pick up a mug, pick up a hat, whatever, thank you in advance for helping us uh, get to the next Absolutely. place and the next Absolutely. town. And uh, I'm, I've already got my eye on a couple of those Randall King T-shirts over there. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, they're not bad. They work. <laughs> Cody's, Cody sings them. Cody wears them. He'll model for you if, if you pay him enough. I don't know if you want to see it, though. It's not that, it's not that great. I think, I think we need an Instagram <laughs> picture of him in the smallest girl's tee that they have over there. Bro, he wears schmedium regardless, so just look on his Instagram. <laughs> Cody Crisp. I think Cody Crisp TM, that's his Instagram. What's up, Bubba? I got you. Everybody on the radio from miles around going to be looking you up, Bubba. You better flex hard. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, Bubba. Whatever I want to do. That's, yes, that's dangerous, man. That's dangerous. I'll save, I'll save a specific song for last, so just in case you can cut it off there, because <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'll play, uh, I'll play one more off my record. This is my favorite song off the whole record, the self-titled one. I wrote this with a friend of mine by the name of Brandon Kinney. And uh, Brandon wrote, he's from, he's from uh, La Mesa. And Brandon wrote Aldine's last number one, Drowns the Whiskey, that he had Miranda Lambert on. Brandon's a badass, man. I love him. And this is the first song we ever wrote together. miles away I could tell by her tone it just wasn't my take she said she was leaving all cold as hell she was giving me reasons and I was telling myself to keep her on the line said any day so much man that's my favorite song of the entire record right there have y'all had a good time tonight 
Man, I have. This has been a great show, man. Thank you again for hauling it all the way down here from Lubbock. I know you're going to be back up to Oklahoma and all over the place. Thank you yeah. for coming down here to oh, do man, this show. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, brother. Thank you for being here. And that song was incredible you played, man. Truly Thank incredible. You. One more round for that, man, because that was good Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Randall, I hate to say it, but you got to pick one to take us home. And I, <laughs> I, oh, man. I think, here's what I think. I think if, if, if I'm remembering right from our conversation up in the green room, he, he's going to play one that's going to be just on the verge of getting me a bunch of fines from the FCC, I think, maybe. <laughs> so we're going to see. We're going to push there's the no, limits hey, there's tonight. No FCC, there's no F-bombs, so we're good. We're no, I think there's some other words, but I think yeah. you're okay. I think yeah. you're all right. We'll shut we'll it the line. We'll see. We'll keep it on the line. <laughs> all right, let's see. So... If you remember, I'm from a very small town in West Texas called Hereford. <laughs> Hereford's in the Bible Belt. You know what the Bible Belt is? Mm, okay. I'm going to go ahead and naturally assume that you guys know what the Bible Belt is. But growing up in the Bible Belt feels a lot like this song. And if you're from a, anybody from a small town, oh, yeah. yeah, well, then you'll understand this song. their mind. In poor Steve got a tattoo sleeve to swear that he's gonna do time. If somebody's cheating thinking it's a secret man they're thinking wrong. He's gonna hit the press and everybody says I've been knew it all along. No you can't run from it. You don't want none of it. If you stick around here you can't steer clear. You're gonna to be stepping in that small town bullshit When you graduate with 28 kids and you're seeing you high It ain't hard to say who's really blame for Cage to think lines Everybody thinks he ought to buy her a ring before her daddy knows Cause if he don't man he's a dead man Oh, she's starting to show No, you can't run from it Hey, you don't want none of it If you stick around here You can't steer clear You're gonna get some of it I'm telling y'all That eventually You're bound to be stepping In that small town bullshit Oh, step around Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Randall King. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight, man. I appreciate y'all very much, man.